Hello Commanders! Welcome back to our journey walkthrough here on the command table. I am Mathramar, and I will be taking you through battles 156 through 160 of the Uncharted Jungle. Before we get to that though, if you would please be so kind as to like, subscribe, and if you want notifications when I drop new videos, hit that notification bell. And if you have any comments, please feel free to leave those below. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Battle 156. Alright, this one we have Werewood. So we have an untamed beast, we have some dire wolves, and then we've got three ancient trees. So the ancient trees would shred any small units that were within range. So what I've done to counter that is I've just started way the heck back here. That's going to force all of these melee units to run all the way over here to encounter them, and that's going to take all three of these trees out of the equation. So once these melee units are resolved, then I've got sufficient ranged units to take them out. You only really need one ranged unit alive, aside from hammer throwers, to take it down. But uh, we have a lot more than that, so it should go a little faster. But this Untamed Beast is going to run into that bomb, and I tried to place it in such a way that it would run just below the wolves, and this Untamed Beast is going to run right at it. So the wolves and the Untamed Beast should hit it at about the same spot, and it should take both of them out. So let's see how we do. Okay, boom. Oh, and you'll notice that the bomb didn't take him all the way out, but it was close enough to get the job done. He wasn't able to get any kills in to start getting his health back. And here we've got the rest of our ranged units and our brute able to do the rest of the job. The shield bearers were only really there to hold off the dire wolves and the untamed beast in the event that the bombs didn't work, but the bomb did work 95% of the way and it wasn't hard to finish them off. All right, 157. Okay, let's have a peek. We have three catapults. Then we've got a level 8 battle drummer with an oversized shield for some reason. Uh, we've got some thorn guards, some shield bearers, and two earth elementals. So what I'm doing here with these two bomb bots, I'm going to be going right in between the earth elemental and the shield bearers. That's why I only need two bomb bots to hit all three units. And that should, between the two bomb bots, that should take out the top and bottom of the shield bears and totally clear them out. And then this third bomb bot is intended to take out the thorn guards in the back. So that may not work uh, every time that you try this, just because the earth elementals have a tendency to pop off in random directions when they separate. So you could have something pop into the middle and that might ruin that bomb bot. But run it again and it might work the next time. We've got two sets of assassins. I have them uh, situated in such a way that they are at an angle to mirror the other side of the map where they would split to go between the two catapults. So all three catapults should be resolved by those assassins. And then we've got some hounds and um, wraiths to clear through whatever's left. And it shouldn't be a whole heck of a lot, along with those hammer throwers. That should speed things up. So let's go ahead and run it. Okay, catapults should be gone. That front line should be resolved. Oh, that top earth elemental didn't go. But we've got plenty of available units to clean it up. Very smooth. Very pleased with that. Okay, so that was 157. We're now on to 158. All right, so here, oh, let's get rid of that, there we go. Uh, we have a Death Knight with some Warhounds up front, and normally it would be very difficult to thread that needle and get into that Death Knight, but I've got these Entangling Roots, and again, just a note, these Entangling Roots do have the current season's Power Stones for Corrupted Enhance, and that gives them a lot more slowing power. So uh, the Warhounds are going to come to almost a complete standstill when they hit it. But that is going to allow this bomb to run through without getting interrupted. Then we've got some Crows and Stormcaller, two Druids, and some Thorn Guards. 
So I've put these assassins far enough forward to where they should spawn right in front of, or actually kind of right in between. Uh, I think, yeah, what I was trying to do was to get one druid and the stormcaller with that one set of assassins. I knew that I wouldn't be able to get that other druid with only one set because the thorn guards are right there, and no matter how you situate them, you're almost always going to have one uh, assassin gravitate to the thorn guards instead. But I figured all I needed was one, and the crows I'm countering with a lot of bodies. We've got two sets of hammer throwers, two sets of shield bearers. That should be plenty of targets for them to hit, which means that even if they do hit one of these crystal spires, one of them will be up all the time, and it should be able to shred through those crows. So uh, anything else that's left, I've got plenty of ranged and melee to go through and burn them down. Speaking of burning down, I've got the Ember Fiend there to take out the Thorn Guards. So that was my thinking for this. Uh, we will go ahead and run it for you. Okay, so goodbye Death Knight. Yes, yeah, so you notice how those Warhounds came to almost a complete stop. That may not be the case in other eras where you don't have the corrupted Power Stones. So now we've got the Ember Fiend tagging those Thorn Guards and easy kill on that Druid. All right, so that was 158. Now we're on to 159. Let's see what we're up against here. We have two bomb bots up front. I've compensated for those by putting the mine shrooms in. Now, I uh, watch when these hit the mine shrooms. You'll notice that when anything hits mine shrooms, even if it's immune to it, it'll pop it. So it'll jump in some random direction. And I, my thought was initially that the bomb bots would hit those and run directly back at the Faceless Knights and blow them up. But uh, this, I think it's the bottom one that gets offset just a little bit and it kind of messes it up. So pay attention to that so you can see how those mechanics work. Also, we have a storm collar in the back, which is kind of the primary threat out of all of this. We want to make sure we resolve that. So I put two sets of assassins, but uh, I've engineered them in such a way to where the rear assassin should split off and from each group and go back to get the archers. And then they'll start working their way forward. Then I've got some wraiths, warhounds, and a battle drummer to come through and clean up whatever's left. So we've accounted for all of the primary threats. We shouldn't have any range left. It should all just be some melee. And with that battle drummer, everything that I've got, even though it's got low HP, it's not going to take very much damage, and it's going to be able to burn through that very quickly. So again, watch those bomb bots. Here we go. And the split on the assassins. Took a couple tries to get it just right. And yeah, you saw the bomb bots just slightly off of their original latitude. And that battle drummer is keeping everything from taking any significant damage. Very nice. Okay, we are moving on to battle 160. And after this one, we'll call it for this video. All right, we're going to do our same trick with the untamed beasts. They're going to run after that one bomb bot, so it's only going to take one to, in theory, kill both of these, but keep an eye on that. Then we've got three sets of shield bearers. And, oh, and another note of what you could do is if you put your units far enough back that the closest units to those untamed beasts are these shield bearers, the untamed beasts will just run back and start shredding them. So that is an alternative. You can just put all of your units on this back line and let the untamed beasts do all the hard work for you. And then I just have a couple of bomb bots running forward that you know will take out those beasts in the end. And anyway, I figured it's just easier to clear them out of the way, get it done. I've got the uh, brute on a leash with the Valkyrie. He's going to run forward and just hold everything in one position while my hammer throwers and my ember fiend nuke it down. So that should resolve all the threats. Let's go ahead and run it so you can see how it goes. Okay, those untamed beasts, one of them survives. And you notice that he turns around and goes and fights his own stuff. But fortunately, he was sitting right there when the other bomb bots came through and they were able to finish him off. But yeah, um, 
I, I don't know why I didn't think of that when I ran this earlier, but you could totally just keep all your units further back and let their own untamed beasts do the heavy lifting for you. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, again, uh, please do like and subscribe. Also, uh, if you would check out the commandtable.com, uh, it's a very new site. We're updating it on a regular basis. We got lots of new things coming down uh, the line, and we will have tutorials. We do have tutorials. We also have raid strats, and soon we will have merchandise and comics. So thank you for watching. We'll have more content for you soon.